All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to thank you for joining us today. We are going to be discussing Microsoft 365 SharePoint Online. Uh, it is an overview of the product uh, and the use cases for using SharePoint Online, as well as uh, some tips and tricks on how to function within the application itself in order to be collaborative and really utilize the full functionality of it with your distributed workforce. So we appreciate you guys getting started with us. Um, we'll talk to you a little bit about who Iron Edge is real quick, uh, and then I'll introduce our speaker, Dan Mallard. So um, let's talk to you about uh, Iron Edge. We're an IT services organization. Uh, we're based out of Texas, uh, and we've been around for 15 years. Uh, we specialize in helping organizations that are frustrated by the hassle and complexity of their technology, or their staff is feeling overwhelmed uh, understaffed and they lack the time to be strategic regarding their technology. Uh, our focus primarily since uh, the beginning of the COVID pandemic is to be uh, is to be a consultative arm for our partners and clients in order to help them take advantage of the cloud services, applications, processes, and systems that are available to help their staff be uh, more effective while they are working either remotely or in a distributed fashion. So. I'll tell you a little bit about Dan Mallard. Dan's been with the organization now, I believe, six years. Uh, he is an account manager and heads up our professional services division. Uh, he's a LSS Greenbelt, a project management professional certified uh, PMO lead. Uh, he's a degree in business administration, and he's been doing IT for a long time. So uh, I want to thank Dan for putting together the presentation. You guys are in great hands. I'm going to turn it over to him so he can tell you a little bit about what SharePoint is and uh, what we're here to talk about today. Dan, take it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Welcome. So today's topics and, and what I want to do today, my goal today is, is to explain how SharePoint Office 365 compares to number one, on-prem file storage, and number two, OneDrive, uh, related to being a cooperative and secure platform for file storage and sharing across a distributed workforce. Uh, I'll explain key features that make it an attractive option to do so and then show you a bit from inside the platform to give you a feeling of the layout and general usage. So let's set the stage, right? Over the last few months, what we've seen with our clients and industry partners is a massive and quick digital transformation to operating fully remote or in, or in a hybrid workforce with some people being remote and some people being located at a centralized corporate environment. So very quickly, companies have had to evaluate how they access, share, and collaborate on documents with a team that's located in different physical locations. Now to do so, the ideal system would need to be collaborative, it would be safe, it would be safe for your infrastructure and safe for your employees, and it would encourage group participation in addition to being a place where files are stored. So next I want to talk about what, what our wish list for that solution would be. So, like I said a moment ago, it would be safe. And what I mean by that is by using a platform to collaborate and share documents and store documents, you wouldn't want to expose your corporate environment to any unnecessary risks. Number two, you want to be able to control your access uh, internally and externally, and you want to be able to manage the security of the platform. Number three, you want a platform and data that's backed up and recoverable in case you delete something. And number four, it, since this is our wish list, you want something that's low cost. So let's take those uh, items from our wish list and transpose those on top of traditional on-prem file storage. And what I mean by on-prem, um, on-prem is what you envision when you're in a corporate environment, you have your Y drive, your accounting drive. Um, at that, that type of system, as you can imagine, it's, it's an internally housed and internally accessible system. Um, it's built really for a corporate environment. And so due to this, the uh, remote access um, is granted in a few different ways. So since this uh, on-prem file storage is intended for like a centralized environment, you have to, um, since you have a distributed workforce, you have to provide access to that environment. And to do so, and you'll hear about VPN connectivity and remote desktop uh, capability. So. If you provide that to your employees in a distributed environment, um, there's issues that are presented. Number one, if someone's on a corporately issued laptop or device, uh, that device is out in the wild. And if someone loses the device, you potentially have data leakage. 
Uh, there's money, uh, you know, tied to supplying everybody a laptop that they then use to VPN in, and it's more devices for your IT department to maintain and support. Now, if you're letting people connect to your environment from uh, their personal device, that's a different set of problems. Now, if they're using a personal device, there's a higher likelihood for malware. Uh, on their personal device because it's not being corporately managed. There's not corporate grade antivirus and, and patching and things like that on it. So if you have somebody that's using a personal device that's then VPN inning to your environment, there's a possibility that malware can traverse from that personal device across the VPN and infect your corporate environment. So that's obviously a really, really big deal. To have all of the infrastructure in place to support VPN or to support remote desktop, it's expensive. It's complex for IT people to support because there's a lot of different components of it. There's the security component, there's backups, there's a network component, there's a server component. And this solution doesn't encourage collaboration or productivity. So let's compare what we talked about before to OneDrive. So the next potential solution to allow remote file access is OneDrive. And many people that I talk to that I consult with believe that OneDrive is a really good uh, file storage replacement system. And OneDrive is a terrific solution, but it's not necessarily designed to be a uh, file storage replacement accessed by many people where it's a collaborative environment. So if you're not familiar with OneDrive, it's a Microsoft product and it syncs to your laptop or your computer, uh, similar to Dropbox. And so normally what people will do is they'll have their My Documents or some type of folder on their computer and that's then synced with OneDrive to uh, basically a storage system out in the cloud. So it lets you back up an individual uh, folder on your, on your computer. And it's similar to if in a, you're in a corporate envir environment, it's similar to an H drive or a home drive. And actually you can, you can use it to sort of back up that infrastructure. And while this is really neat and it's really, really useful and it's inexpensive. It doesn't really solve the problem that we're trying to solve today to provide an environment that's collaborative for an entire team to access. It's really good for a single person to back up their stuff though. So we talked about on-prem, we talked about OneDrive. Let's talk about SharePoint and how it relates to all of this. Now, um, SharePoint is a web page. Uh, it's the goal of the platform and why it was built, and why it's been sold to us since the early 2000s. It's, it's intended to share documents across groups of people. It's an intended uh, for collaboration. It's intended to be a platform that informs people about things through news and different guidance. And most importantly, uh, and what turned red here on your slide is, is the meat and potatoes of SharePoint is that it contains libraries of documents that are organized per business unit in your organization. And that's how, that's how people access them, right? So this platform is intended to solve the items that we talked about a moment ago. So I'm gonna move on to key features. So the key features from our wish list, is, number one is that it would be safe and it would be safe for corporate systems. So the, the number one point to talk about with SharePoint and how it keeps the rest of your environment safe is that data is separated from your corporate environment. There's no VPN that connects the two environments. So if someone does have uh, a have malware on their local computer, it's not going to traverse the VPN and infect anything. It's completely distinctly set up, uh, separate. Number two, because you're using a platform that Microsoft has already built and vetted and, and uh, manages, it's less complex for your internal staff to manage. And what I mean by that is they don't, your internal staff doesn't have to support the servers. They don't have to design the security. They don't have to maintain the networks. That's really, really important. And number three, the platform was built uh, around ensuring people have secure remote access. Now your on-prem file server probably wasn't designed to support that. So it's important that the, the, that SharePoint in particular was designed to support this and it's got features like multi-factor authentication and many, many, uh, a host of other features that, that are designed to support that. So number two on our wish list was access control and security and we want that in the platform. And of course, as you can imagine, SharePoint has that and access is controlled by groups of people. Uh, and so you basically say your operations group consists of these people those people that have access to the appropriate area in SharePoint 
and they can have view access, they can have edit access, they can have upload access, and that's pretty much how it's managed. Um, you can also have controllable and auditable guest access per item within the environment. So access control and security is, is well developed and it's in the platform. Now the next thing I want to talk about is whether or not the platform or anything that you put in, in place, it, the data is recoverable and it's backed up. Now it is recoverable in, in SharePoint and what I mean by that is there's number one is a recycle bin feature that's baked into the platform. So if you delete something inside the, the SharePoint platform, you can go to the recycle bin and get it out. You know, as opposed to an on-prem file server, if you've ever had the experience where you delete something off of a, uh, your X drive, which is say your HR drive, and you delete something off of there, you normally have to go to your IT department to recover it, right? It's not easy, you know, just don't go to your own recycle bin and recover it. So recycle bin's really important. Number two, and a key feature that I'm gonna show you here at our walkthrough in just a minute, is there's a version history feature that's baked into SharePoint. What that is, is you have the version and you can access the version that everybody's been working on the current version, but then you can choose to look at and restore previous versions straight from the SharePoint interface, which is really, really powerful. Um, number three, SharePoint as a platform has, has a system that's been put in place and it's called Files Restore for SharePoint. And if your administrator needs to restore an entire library of data for some reason, they can do that from specific points in time. And number three, as an add-on to what SharePoint provides as a platform, we as consultants uh, highly suggest that you use a third-party backup in addition to your Office 365. So we feel like that is critical and it provides another layer of, of backup and recoverability. So our final uh, item on our wish list was that whatever we put in place to solve all these needs would be low cost. That'd be great, right? Well, Office 365 E3 is 20 bucks per month per user. And you get access to everything shown here on this slide, which includes mail. It includes OneDrive, which is a terrific solution for individual user file storage. All of the desktop apps shown here. That price, the $20 per month per user covers five, five devices. So that's terrific. So you compare that cost, the 20 uh, per user per month, to the, to the cost that it takes to stand up a traditional uh, on-prem file storage infrastructure and a mail infrastructure, and looking at 20 per user per month is a very, very attractive option. You don't have servers, you don't have licensing, you don't have security, you don't have data storage, you don't have backup, and all the stuff that you need to support that environment. So really, uh, you know, arguably, it's a very, very low, co low cost for the solution. Um, other costs that you want to consider if you're if you're kind of getting curious about SharePoint deployment is there's probably some upfront costs and some labor uh, that you'll need to stand up the environment initially. And I like to tell people that could be anywhere from a few dozen hours through hundreds and it really depends on the size of the environment and what you intend to do with it. For a SharePoint environment that's just a couple pages that you kind of want to get your feet wet, it's maybe a dozen, two dozen hours to set up. Um, finally, other cost considerations uh, are that a, a moment ago I mentioned that we suggest a third-party backup tool for your Office 365 environment, um, Mail, SharePoint, and OneDrive, and you want to consider that too. There's a, there's a monthly reoccurring cost per user for that. I'd estimate up around $10 per user, something like that, um, for a total spend of $30 per user per month, plus uh, some amount of labor to get your environment set up. So jumping over to the wish list that we started with, uh, SharePoint is a, it, it's absolutely a safe, it's safe for corporate systems. Um, it's built around access control and security, both internally and externally. It's all auditable. Um, the system is, has many features to recover data. Uh, it has backups built into the platform. And then there are, there's also, like I said, good third party backups that you can bolt onto it to provide an extra layer of backup. It's reasonably, it's reasonably priced. Um, so really it's accomplished everything in our wish list. Now the one, one things I did wanna mention before we take a product tour that there's some environments and some files that SharePoint Online isn't a great solution for. And that's things that are really, really big, really complex that require quite a bit of rendering like CAD files, massive databases, complex spreadsheets. If your environment contains a lot of that information that is most likely best served to be housed and dealt with locally uh, that doesn't mean you don't deploy a SharePoint, but you probably want some type of infrastructure in place where those files live. 
So now I'm going to take you on a product tour and we'll look around a little bit. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back out of my presentation and I'm going to take you over to SharePoint. So what you should see now is my browser. So everything that I'm doing from this point forward is in my browser. It's all you need to interact with this stuff. So uh, where I'm going to go first here, this is Contoso Electronics SharePoint page. And if you're familiar with Microsoft and Microsoft training in particular, Contoso Electronics is their, their uh, demo stuff. It's their, it's their stuff that they use for examples. So this is Microsoft example, Microsoft example SharePoint site. So what you'll see here, and if you have any type of familiarity with SharePoint, it looks pretty familiar. Um, it kind of has a nice sheen to it now that it's developed since the early 2000s. But what this is, I've gone to the core SharePoint site, and what you're seeing here is uh, basically a page that has uh, news that it thinks I'm going to be interested in. It's going to show frequent sites that I go to. And really, this page is intended to be a shortcut to other things that I, that I oftentimes go look at. Now, what I'm going to do from this main landing page is I'm going to show you over here on the left. Um, you'll see the business unit pages that I have access to. So you'll see operations over here on the left. I can get to that SharePoint library and, and do things in there. I can go to retail and so on and so forth. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the operations page. So I'm just going to click that. It's going to take me over to the operations department or business units page. Uh, the way Microsoft has their set up is uh, basically the landing page or the home page. It's just information about the operations team, and that's neat. Um, but really, the meat and potatoes, like I talked about earlier within SharePoint, is the document libraries. It's where all the stuff lives that your team is going to collaborate on. So I'm going to jump over to that. And the way I'm going to get there is over here on the left, there's a, there's a thing here that says documents. So I'm going to click on that. And what you're going to see are the documents contained within this document library that the operations group, uh, you know, attends to. It's what they work on. So first of all, while I'm here, uh, one thing I'll point out real quick is uh, it has terrific search. And what's going to come up in the search of SharePoint is anything that I have access to. So you'll see down here toward the bottom that I have access and I can get to this bug list document, right? It's a little Excel document. So just to test, I'm gonna go up here into search and it's gonna come right up, right? So that's terrific. I wanted to point that out to you. Um, things that I don't have access to will not come up in the search, which is terrific. Um, next, I'm gonna show y'all how, how quickly and easily I can just move a document into the SharePoint site. Now remember, it's in a browser. It's not in a folder on your computer. So if it's, if it's a folder on your computer, drop something in it. Well, it's just as easy within this platform. So I have a file here that I grabbed with my mouse. And now, uh, hopefully what has happened is you see a little outline of this web part, and I'm going to let go of this file. And right here, it says it's now available. So it was as easy as that. That's how I place something into the SharePoint fight, site. And um, so that's, that's a pretty, there's obviously other ways to do it. There's buttons here that I can create a new document or I can upload, but really what I like to do and the way I use it, the fastest way to do it is I just drag stuff to it. Um, next, I wanna show you all uh, how to quickly access files that live in this environment. So the easiest way to do it is you click it. So I'm gonna go into annotated litware contract where I believe Haley from our team and uh, Mr. Andrew Moore from our team, they're, they're in there working as well right now. So I want to click on that. And that's going to bring up this document. Now, uh, that's straight from the SharePoint site. You'll see in Office 365, uh, it brought up the sort of the, the, the Word program within my browser, which is terrific. And it gives me this little prompt here that says, while you were away, some changes were made to this document. That's really, really cool. Um, I can also collaborate with the team and I can see, okay, right now, uh, this MA icon, that's Andrew Moore, it's the administrator. I can see he's in here working right now. Next, I can see Haley is in here working right now as well. And I can see they have the document open and they're working on it. That's really, really slick. So, so I've been working with Haley and we're working on something together and I want to see what she's doing. So I just go to her location right here. So I just click this. It takes me right to what Haley's doing right now. That's terrific. Um, I can see what Mr. Moore is doing. I can see he's on page three. And we can work together 
uh, either on a Teams call, on the phone, or just like this and kind of work through this document. We don't even need to be on a Teams call to do this. So I can see that the, the administrator here is working and we can leave each other comments uh, and they'll see what I'm doing as well. So that's, that's really, really slick. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you all, if you wanna know who has access to, uh, to files and who can, who can um, edit and view files, you can click right over here. So what I've done is I've gone back to SharePoint and over here on the right, there's, there's the members of the group, this operations group basically, right? So I can click this and I can see everybody that throughout the group membership has access to this file. So that's terrific. This mod administrator right here, this is Andrew. So I know he has access. So he was in there working. Um, and any of these people, theoretically, I could call up on Teams and say, hey, I've got the file open. Can you, can you come in here? I could call Christy here. Um, you see that there's a lot of pop-ups uh, coming up and basically telling me things have been edited and, and, and so on and so forth, which is great. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is how to collab where we talked about how to collaborate on a file next is versioning so say andrew and Haley and i have been working for several days on a file and i realized that uh oh i need to go back to a, a previous version of the file because it has something really really important that i still need so you know staying on this annotated litware contract file uh i'm going to click this 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 button right here and it's going to give me a bunch of really 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 interesting things i can do and we're going to go through some of these today so number one, I want to see the versions of this file because I feel like when Andrew and I were working on it, something I had previously was really, really important. So I'm going to click on version history and it's going to bring up all the different versions of this file, which is terrific. I can go back and click on this right here. I can open it. Uh, I can see information about it. I can restore it. So it's the newest file and it gives you the ability to do that from within, within the platform. You don't have to call your IT staff to do it. So that's really, really a powerful uh, tool just for knowing what's happened to a file, but also to recover files in case something happens. So that's, that's really, really slick. I wanted to show you all that. Um, one thing, as, if you've noticed over here on the right side of my screen, there's been several pop-ups that, that give me information that things are changing. So I wanted to talk to you all about that. So one of the cool features that's baked into this, the most recent versions of SharePoint is, uh, is the ability to alert me, which is down here and I've got my mouse over it. So if I click this alert me, what it does is it gives me, a, it gives me the ability to say, okay, anything that happens with this document, email me literally uh, when anything changes or when someone else changes something and send me a notification immediately. And I have that turned on already for this document. So what's been happening is Andrew and Haley have been working in here. It's been emailing, emailing my account and, and letting me know that stuff's going on with this document. Now, maybe you don't need a uh, notification immediately, but it can send you summaries as well, which I think is really, really neat. So you have some important documentation that are budgets or something like that, and you need to know when someone else gets in and messes with it. Well, this is a terrific way that's already built into this platform to collaborate and just sort of be informed on what's going on. So that's, that's terrific. Uh, I wanted to jump over to uh, Outlook here. So this is what you're seeing now is all the emails that it sent me when people made changes within that document. So I can look in here and I can see what's going on to the document that we're collaborating on together. So that's, that's really, really interesting. I like that a lot. So next, I wanna talk about how to share files, both internally and externally. So uh, one moment here. So we're back over to the SharePoint. Now, the way I like to use this product, and I've been using this for many, many years, and I think this is the, the easiest way to share stuff internally, is I'll go here and I'll say copy link, right? It's one of the cool features that are, that's baked inside the platform. So it's going to copy the link to the file. Then I can take that link right there, and you'll notice down here there's, there's some uh, security-related features here. Uh, which I'll go through in just a second. But I'm going to copy the link and I can just paste that in a Teams chat. I can email it to somebody and say, hey, here's the file we're working on. This is the exact file. You don't even have to browse to it. Just click this link and it'll take you to it. And we do that all the time. We'll, we have you know, threads within our Teams platform. We say, hey guys, here's the file we're working on. And it's very, very easy to click it and then get right into the file. So that's the way I do it internally. But there's plenty of other ways to do it. This is just, I think, the fastest and easiest. So if you wanna share something externally, it's, it's similarly as easy. So what I do 
is first of all, uh, we're not really getting into the guts of the of the security settings today and the sharing settings. And, and trust me, those are really, really interesting and I'd love to go through them, but those dictate what happens when I try to do this. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. And if y'all are interested in those type of settings and feedback on that, let us know and we could do a webinar or some other training on it. But if I want to share things externally, I am going to click on this little icon right here. And for example, say I want to share something with uh, somebody that has the email address danmallard at gmail.com. Again, this assumes that the SharePoint environment has been set up to allow this. Okay, I'm going to share something with this person. All right, look at this. This link won't work for people outside of your organization. Great. Um, let's do this. Let's say I'm going to share this with specific people. I'm going to apply that. Dan Mallard at gmail.com. Click here. All right, it liked that. Um, and I am going to now send this to Dan Mallard at gmail.com. So send. Now that link has then been sent to a, a user that this system doesn't recognize. So I'm going to jump over here. You'll get an email that, that is this. It'll say Dan Mallard, Dan Mallard has shared a file with you. You go to open it. And there it is. Now it says you don't have permissions to download or print the file. That's because I didn't set that permission when I sent out the link, of course. Um, and I, I, can't, I can't edit it like we were doing a few minutes ago, but I can see comments and I can see the final file here. So that's that's terrific, and it's a it's a it's a secure way to share things outside of your organization. Um, next, very quickly, I know uh, this has been quite a few minutes. I want to talk to you about a couple more things. So just one moment. So back over here on SharePoint, there's some other neat function functionality that I'd like to show you real quick. Number one, um, you can use OneNote. So our organization, Iron Edge, has really adapted well to using OneNote and we're able to share it between departments and we're able to collaborate on our OneNote files. And if you're not familiar with OneNote, what it is, it's a platform built literally for taking notes and creating task lists across teams that you all can reference over and over and understand what happened in a meeting or who's doing what and so on and so forth. It's really, really powerful. But straight from the SharePoint platform, you can go to it. And I'm gonna click this button over here on the left that says Notebook. That's gonna take me into the related OneNote file for the operations department. And remember, I'm in the operation team SharePoint page. There's also an operation team uh, notebook where that same team has access to this notebook and they can all edit items and add items and read items and so on and so forth. So that's really, really neat integration between the two platforms. The next thing I wanna talk about is something very similar, which is Teams. Now, we're Iron Edge in particular has really adapted well to using Teams, especially over the last few months. We're really trying to do a lot of really interesting and, and, and unique things with it. So, one of the things I wanted to show you all today is this is the Teams platform uh, that's, that's uh, for the environment that we're looking at. So, you'll see that inside of Teams, there's uh, the retail group. Now, if we go back over to our SharePoint very quickly. Here it is. I'm gonna go back out here to SharePoint and I'm gonna to go to the retail group. So you'll see there's a retail business unit and they've got uh, you know, similar stuff to operations. And you'll see that there is a general folder that lives here in the SharePoint environment. Well, all of this stuff in the general folder is accessible via Teams. So you see general here and then you see files right here. And this is a direct link to the, to the SharePoint environment for retail, which is really, really neat. Um, you can also add little links up here to different things that live in the SharePoint environment. For example, right here is retail accounts. This is taken straight and synced to, it's the same data from SharePoint. So if I check this and check this here on inside the Teams platform, SharePoint is updated as well. So it's really, really neat. It's really good integration between Teams, between SharePoint, between OneNote, between Outlook alerting, so on and so forth. So that's it for today's tour of the product. So just one moment, I'm gonna bring the presentation back up. 
okay? That was the product tour. So now uh, what I'd like to do is, is give you our call to action, excuse me. So our, our call to action today is uh, to understand your current strategy related to what we've talked about today, which is file storage, group access, uh, and the costs related to, to your environment and, and what that means to you. And I want you to take that information, how you accomplish file storage and collaboration, the related costs, and I want you to compare those to what we've talked about today with SharePoint and Office 365. And if there's a gap, uh, what, what I'd ask you to do is get with us, get with your preferred uh, IT consultant, get with your internal IT team, and, and understand what the best path is to move forward and how you can move forward in solving these problems. Well, that's it today. I thank you for attending. Uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, we had a couple of questions. Tammy had asked a question about okay. um, being able to work in a web version. Uh, and if you don't want to do that and you download the file, yeah. uh, then you have to re-upload it. Will others know that I have the document checked out? So I was able to find some documentation on Microsoft's website uh, that talked about kind of check-in and check-out um, and kind of how that works. We can post some more of that information back um, onto our webinar recap um, regarding that specifically. Uh, maybe take a couple of screenshots in our demo environment. Um, but Dan, do you have anything else to add to, to that about people being able to see documents that are checked out while you're in the document itself? While you're in the document or itself. Or when you've downloaded it. Yeah, so I, I can speak to this uh, as far as my experience. Just the other day, we were working inside of a document that I had open in the, in the full version or the desktop version of a product. And I believe we were in Excel that day. And um, I could tell that when I went to go save the document, it told me other people were working in there. It just popped up and told me. And so then it said, you want to wait? You know, it asked me what I wanted to do. And then it, when the people that were working in there were done and said, okay, now you need to seek up your version. How do you want to do that? And it gave me the prompts to handle that. So the, 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 the platform is pretty smart as far as that goes. Uh, and the other question was, if you don't want others to edit a document, can you lock it? Yes. Um, so yeah, my, my mm -hmm. understanding is you can, and then there are, it, it's something that happens in the permission settings inside of the file. Like you can go in and, and set some of those within SharePoint. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. And that's, that feature has been in SharePoint since the early 2000s. What you used to have to do, and maybe what the question is related to is, you used to have to literally go and lock your document and then work on it and then unlock it and then other people could get to it. And then over time that's sort of become automated. And now the system's matured itself to where it can handle two and three people in the same document and not freak out. But yeah, you still have the ability to lock it if you would like to. Awesome. Um, great. Well, uh, doesn't look like we have any other questions. So we want to thank you guys for joining us. We've got a fantastic webinar schedule for the 19th of May. Uh, our focus is going to be on distributed workforce and how to manage your remote teams. So we're really excited about being able to come back with some information about what a distributed workforce looks like. How do you use the technology uh, that you have within SharePoint and Teams and other things to kind of flatten your communication structure, how to manage for outcomes uh, and how to move your organization from a level one or a level two uh, remote work team to a level two, level three, level four organization uh, and really take the, the most advantage you can of, of this time when everybody's going to be separated for a while uh, in, in either a completely remote or somewhat hybrid environment. So um, I'm excited about that. I'm going to be doing that presentation. Uh, president of our company, Ryan Lincoln, may jump on there with me a little bit. Um, so we're, we're, we're stoked to, to get you guys some good information about that. Looking forward uh, to that webcast. So that's going to be on the 19th. We'll send out information and reminders about it. But uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us. If you're a client, if you're not, uh, feel free to, to reach out to us at getinfo at ironedgegroup.com. And uh, we can talk to you about how to help you and your organization. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks.